Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett, and today I'm going to be reviewing the DaVinci 1.0 Pro printer from XYZ Printing. Now, a couple of months ago, XYZ Printing reached out to me and wanted to send me one of their printers um, so I could review it and put a video up here on YouTube. So they did, and I've been messing with this printer for about two months straight now, but I did want to let you guys know that I did not pay for this printer but um, they are not sponsoring this video in any sort of way. They have not given me any money. So everything you see here is my honest opinion and uh, my experiences with this printer. Okay, so I haven't done many of these reviews, so I'm gonna structure it like this. I'm gonna start out with some facts about the printer. I'm gonna talk about what came in the box, and then I'm gonna talk about things that I like about the printer, and then some things that I don't like about the printer. And then I'll wrap it up with some thoughts at the end. So this printer comes fully assembled and it is right around the 600 US dollar mark. Now keep in mind that there is also a 3-in-1 model of this printer that comes with a um, 3D scanner and a laser engraver. That is $200 more, around $800 USD at the time of filming, filming this. Um, so that is not what I'm reviewing, I am just reviewing the printer portion of it. So the build volume of this printer is um, 8 inches by 8 inches by 8 inches, which is 20 centimeters squared. Um, it has a heated aluminum bed, it has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and it is a Bowden style extruder. They also boast layer heights of 100 to 400 microns. You can print with this printer using a USB cable tethered to a PC, or they actually have Wi-Fi capabilities in this printer too, so you don't have to be tethered to anything. It has a small LCD screen on the front, along with a couple buttons to help navigate that LCD screen because it is not touch screen. This printer uses proprietary filament cartridges that are only sold by XYZ Printing, but there is a hole in the back that will allow other filaments through, so you can use third-party filaments. With this, I'll talk more about that in a second. And they do not have an SD card reader available to use on this printer. A little bit more on that in a second as well. Then the last fact I want you guys to know about this printer is that um, there is a 200 US dollar upgrade for the laser engraver. If you just get the normal printer like I have, you can upgrade it to have that laser engraver attached to it. They have an easy exchange system um, where you can pull out the extruder and swap in the laser engraver. And then they have supporting software that goes along with that. So now let's move to what was in the box. Um, this thing was packaged up very well, which was a good thing too because my wife literally watched the FedEx guy tumble this out of the truck um, before he gave it to us. So that was great. But luckily it was packaged well and there was no damage done to the printer. So definitely points for that. And then in the box we have the printer of course and then um, several sets of tools, one of which being a scraper to help remove prints, which is very nice. Um, and then some other tools that are cleaning tools um, to help unclog the nozzle and also to clean the nozzle and clean off the um, auto leveling tip. They included three sheets of tape that were roughly the size of the bed. It came with two filament cartridges. Um, one of them was red ABS and the other was sun orange ABS. They also had an instruction booklet to help you get started and then a CD that had um, their slicing software on it. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I've been using this printer for about two months straight. Um, and I would say I've been using it pretty heavily. I've just been printing test print after test print, um, trying to dial in the settings and really work out the kinks with this printer to see uh, what my thoughts of it were. So I have a bunch of test prints that are ABS and a couple that are PLA, and I even tried some more exotic filaments as well. Okay, so let's jump right into what I like about this printer. So first thing I noticed is this printer looks beautiful. It's very sleek looking um, and it catches people's attention right away. But obviously that's subjective, so um, you can make your own decision on that. I also really like the Wi-Fi feature of this printer. Um, not having to have a USB cord tethered to it or anything like that is very nice. But there are some caveats to the Wi-Fi feature as well, so um, stick around and I'll explain more about that. And then overall, I just really enjoyed the quality of the prints that I was getting off of this printer. And I was very reliably getting quality prints off of this thing, um, even in ABS. So it does print ABS well. I also like that this printer is fairly quiet. Um, the Z-axis noise is pretty loud, but um, the only time that's really loud is when the print finishes and the bed is dropping down or when you start up and the bread, bed is coming back up. Um, while it's actually printing, uh, this printer is very quiet. There were actually a few times that I was in the room and had to double check to make sure that the print was still printing, which is a good sign in my book. Also, I think this printer is priced very fairly. For some of the features that this printer boasts, like the print size, Wi-Fi capabilities, and things like that, I think the $600 price tag is very reasonable. I think it should be noted here that um, once I had the settings and everything dialed in on this printer, um, I was able to get it printing reliably with high quality prints 
um, and I did not have any print failures. Now I think that's partly due to the fact that I've used a 3D printer before so I kind of know um, what I can and can't do. But there are also some other things that just happen with 3D printers that I haven't had happen with this yet. So I think that speaks to the quality. Okay, so now it is time to talk about what I don't like about this printer. The first thing that really stood out to me was the bed. Um, it is an aluminum bed with nothing on it when it comes and um, you just flat out cannot print on this thing. Um, it seems to actively repel filament. Um, it wouldn't even pretend to stick down. I tried hairspray, I tried glue, just to see if those would work and none of them helped. But it seems that they realized this because they did include um, sheets of tape that were the size of the bed that I could just put on there. And then that worked really great once those were on there. But I personally don't like the tape solution. Um, so I pretty quickly moved on and I actually got some build tech sheets which were the size of the bed and you just put on there. Those work phenomenally, so I definitely suggest either getting some of those or maybe looking into a Flex 3D plate. Now I mentioned earlier that I'd be coming back to the Wi-Fi, and this is kind of an interesting one. The Wi-Fi seems to work intermittently. Um, and now I have not been able to reproduce this, so I haven't even really been able to call the support on it to see if there's some sort of issue. It just seems like sometimes I'll turn the printer on and my computer will be able to connect to it, uh, no problem, print no problem, everything will work. Um, but then other times I'll turn the printer on, turn my computer on, and the printer just does not seem to respond to anything. I can't even ping it. Now I did find setting a static IP address for the printer does help this a bit. And through navigating the printer menus, you can actually get it to tell you that it is connected to Wi-Fi and um, what the IP address of the printer is. And I was able to confirm that when it is not connecting, my computer is trying to hit that IP address the printer just does not seem to respond. But like I said, I cannot reliably reproduce that, so I honestly don't know what's going on, and other people may or may not have that problem, so take that for what you will. But it should also be noted that when the Wi-Fi does connect, the printer works flawlessly. Um, I can send it models, it prints, everything works great, as long as it connects. It's just that connection thing that sometimes does not work. And then I also wanted to talk about SD cards for a second. Now I think this is a pretty small gripe, but it is a gripe nonetheless. So my computer is not in the same room as my printer, so I physically cannot um, hook it up via USB anymore. Um, so if, when the Wi-Fi doesn't work, it's a pretty big inconvenience. So I wish there was a way that I could just put a file on an SD card, take it down there, and um, get printing on it. But they do not include an SD card reader um, that is available for use, which I find kind of frustrating because um, through messing with this printer, I did find that if you take the back panel off of the printer, there is a micro SD card slot on the back that um, holds a log file and it actually holds some sample G code files that you can print straight from the printer's interface. And the reason that I find that frustrating is that the functionality is already built into the printer um, and they have an SD card reader on that. I just wish they could have exposed that to us um, to allow us to use it. Now I think probably my biggest frustration from this printer comes from the bed leveling feature. Now I know there are some people out there that really like leveling their own bed. And usually it's the people that are very good with their printers that um, like doing that manually. I am not one of those people. Um, my only other printer does have an auto leveling feature and I think I've been spoiled by it. Um, so it is frustrating to have to go in there and try and tweak those settings. But once you get it, it's pretty good. Um, you just have to keep leveling it every so often because it will unlevel itself over time. And really, that's not that big of a deal, but they have this um, like bed leveling assistance feature that you can access through the LCD on the printer. And it has a little probe that goes down and touches the four corners of the print bed and tries to instruct you on how many times to turn the knobs to get the bed to be level. But I noticed that this was a little bit finicky. And I think it's due to um, having a little bit of filament film or something like that on the probe that touches because I noticed every once in a while the probe would come down and sit for longer on one of those than I thought it should have and other times it just taps it and goes back up. And I was experiencing times where it would tell me to turn the front knob forward seven times and then I'd go back and level it again to check that it was level and it would tell me to turn it backwards seven times undoing what I had just done. And so that was pretty frustrating but I found by um, meticulously cleaning with the cleaning tools that they provided and watching that it just quickly taps those, um, I was able to get a level bed. But it is still not the most user-friendly thing in the world. Okay, the rest of these are pretty minor, but I thought I'd mention them anyways. Um, the, the physical size of the printer. Because it is fully enclosed, um, the, the physical size of the printer is big. And the depth of the printer can be a problem if you have a desk that is not very deep. I also don't like the filament cartridges system. 
Um, they claim that it's for educational purposes, that it makes it easier, it'll alert you when the um, filament's running out, things like that, which is all true. But ultimately, I think it's a way for them to get more money out of you because you have to go back to them to buy this cartridge because it is proprietary. And when I say cartridge, this is what I mean. There is a filament spool in here. Um, it is about 600 grams, and it just comes out of the top right here, feeds into the printer, and then there is a little chip on the bottom here that the printer reads to basically tell it how much filament is left, which is nice. But these are pretty expensive um, for not being even a full kilogram of filament. And I had heard in XYZ's previous printers, um, you were not able to use third-party filament, you had to use the cartridges. But luckily, I think they heard people's complaints and they do allow um, third-party spools of filament, as long as it's uh, 1.75 millimeters and you do have to print a spool holder um, to go on the back of it. And unfortunately that does add more depth. So that's frustrating for me because um, the printer itself does fit on my desk. It just takes up the whole space. But in order to have an extra spool behind it, um, it does take up extra space and I actually had to move my desk out and it's pretty hard to get back there to change the filament. So then on the CD that comes with the printer, they have um, some software on there called XYZWare and that is their um, slicing software that allows you to send the files to the printer. Um, luckily, you do not have to use this because it is not very good software. It does work, and it works with the Wi-Fi capabilities and stuff like that. It is just extremely basic and does not give you as fine a control over what you're actually printing. You can print directly to this printer from other slicing software like Cura and Simplify 3D. And Simplify 3D does even support the Wi-Fi features on here, which is extremely helpful. And I definitely recommend that everyone gets and tries out Simplify 3D. Now, my final complaint is construction booklet. Um, it, it was kind of broken English, um, some things were not grammatically correct, which usually isn't that big of a deal, I can navigate my way through it, but there were a few key places that the wording was kind of weird, and it led me to do something um, out of order, and the instructions actually walk you through a decently complicated series of steps to get used to this printer and get it printing for the first time. I mean, this was the instructions page to get the entire thing set up. As you can see, there are way too many steps just to fit on this tiny page. The text is small, and without it being in perfect English, it's very hard to follow at times. So just be aware that if this is your first time with a 3D printer, um, this is probably going to be a hard process to get through. But if you are experienced with 3D printers, especially 3D printers that require you to level the bed yourself and set the Z offset yourself, you'll have absolutely no problem getting in and using this printer. Okay, so uh, let's wrap it up with final thoughts. Overall, my experience with this printer has been very, very positive. I actually really enjoy this printer. It may have seemed like I was going a little bit heavy on the negatives there, but I just really wanted to highlight to potential buyers of this printer the things that um, did not go well for me and what I did to fix them. So now that I have the settings dialed in and I've worked out some of the kinks that go along with this printer, I just stay within those guidelines I found out for myself. It's been a very strong addition and I will likely use this printer um, quite heavily in the coming months and off into the future as long as it's still printing. But like I said earlier, I have only been using this for two months and there's a lot that can go wrong with printers that you don't see um, until you've been using them for a long time. So if you're looking into getting one of these printers, but make sure you subscribe to my channel because um, if anything else big comes up with this printer, I will definitely make a video about it and post it here. And then I make new 3D models, print them out, and my wife paints them just about every week, and I will definitely be using this printer for some of those. So if you'd like to see some more of what this printer does, uh, make sure you get subscribed. Okay, so down to recommendations. Um, can I recommend this printer for you? For the price point, I think it comes with some wonderful features, and especially if the Wi-Fi feature appeals to you, this, this printer is great. And I have been continually amazed by the quality of prints that comes off of this thing. And also, if a laser engraver appeals to you, having the option to upgrade to that later um, is something worth looking into. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this printer review. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and get subscribed below. I put out new videos every week. That's it for me guys. See you next time.